Ending event in the Olympics is the decathlon. Ten track and field events combined to make up the decathlon, and it's contested over two days. Now, many consider the gold medalist to be the world's greatest athlete. Some of the greatest battles in sports occur when two athletes of equal talent push each other to the top of their field. The decathlon has frequently been the stage for such battles. In 1960, it was Rayford Johnson being chased in his Olympic gold pursuit by Olympic C.K. Yang of Japan. And in 1968, Bill Toomey had arch rival Kurt Binlon of the Federal Republic of Germany to contend with. Today, another great rivalry will continue in this tradition as the decathlon gold medal is the only acceptable reward for Daley Thompson of Great Britain and Jürgen Hengson of Germany. Daley Thompson, world champion in 1980, Olympic decathlon gold medalist. Jürgen Hengson, current world record holder in the decathlon. This is a classic struggle between two diverse opponents. Daily, charismatic, and cocky. Oh! Jürgen with a gentle charm and a Hollywood smile. Daly has not lost the decathlon since 1978. Jürgen has broken the world record three times, but has never beaten Daly in head-to-head -head competition. And there's no love lost between these two rivals. It's difficult, obviously, to be friendly because uh, we're both after the same things. And, uh, you know, it, it's easier for me to be friendly because I keep on getting them. <laughs> well, he's always uh, telling everybody how great he is and uh, uh, he's unbeatable and he's the best athlete that's ever existed. And, see, and I, people who, and we say in Germany, dogs that shout very loud, yeah, they don't bite. On any given day that we're running together, I just try harder than he does. He, he always thinks it's going to happen, and whereas I just, I, I just know I'm going to run my best. He's a good motivation for me. Uh, he's a very good athlete, um, and I think that he has to be beaten. And I think that if it's, that's what I'm going to do. We look at each other often, but we never, we never see each other. You know what I mean? We, we he always looks, and I'm not looking. And I know he's looking. <laughs> Daley Thompson is not my life, I can tell you. <laughs> I, have other, I have better things to do. So let's see what Los Angeles gives us. Those, of course, are the two favorites. But this is Bob Mathias. He won this event twice. First in 1948, when at the age of 17, he was the youngest ever winner of track and field event. And then again in 1952. And you wonder about the thoughts. This youngster from Tulare, California. And later there was Bruce Jenner, who after eight events had been assured of the gold medal, but ran his last race, the 1,500 meters, like a real champion. Of course, he had to be a champion to get there in the position to win the gold. He's going to be in that 417, 418 area. If he should get into 414, that'll guarantee him going past 8,600 points. Edwin Jenko trying to hold on. Memorable moments for Bob and Bruce, and of course, one's in color, one's in black and white. That'll say something about it, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, All my lot. highlights are in black and white, too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have been through this. Uh, you know uh, the feelings of the athletes today. The first five events are contested today. Bob, what's going through their heads right now? I think they're very excited to uh, uh, begin. Uh, uh, these guys have been working out for many, many years now for one thing, the uh, 84 games. So I, I'm sure they're, they're calm, they're uh, determined to get out there to do the best they can, but I, I think they're glad it's finally here. Mm -hmm. And I know something else, Frank, I'm glad I'm watching and not out there in the field. <laughs> it is tough. Uh, Bruce, you devoted a lifetime to it. Bob mm -hmm. came off as the entire Tulare High School team a few miles from where I went to high school, but you devoted your lifetime to this. What was your feeling just before it began in Montreal and then when it concluded with that 1500? I start off with fear. Uh, tremendous uh, amount of pressure that was on me. Uh, it scared me an awful lot. But I really thought in my head that that was just a cue for me to start thinking and be the smartest guy out there. Uh, it was really very difficult. It was not, you, know, you don't go through an Olympic experience like it's a fun time. You know, you may look back on it as being fun, but at the time, it's work. And there's so much pressure on you. 
you always doubt yourself. Like this morning, all these guys are getting up saying, I wonder if that performance is in me one more time. Daly Thompson and Jurgen Hinkson. They're thinking, can I bring it out of myself one more time? And uh, it isn't until you finally get down to the stadium, you get yourself into the blocks and you run that first event, that now all of a sudden you're in your element. And uh, you feel good about yourself, especially if you're coming up with good performances. And after it's over with, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you. I wonder if thing. all great athletes don't really somewhere kind of doubt themselves. It kind of carries oh, them yeah. a, little, a little bit further than they could. I think uh, they do before the starting gun, but once that once it goes, gun goes off, goes, then they're in their element because they've it. done this yeah. thousands of times yeah. in the past. And you know, they bring you guys out of the closet. I don't mean you guys because you won, but they bring the decathlete out of the closet every four years. What mm -hmm. happens? During the intermediate years, the three years. Not much. Well, they train. Kind of lonely, <laughs> isn't it? They train, yeah. yeah, yeah but I mean, it's relatively uh, it's unfortunate uh, anonymously. The, the, the sport, there's only one real good meet every four years. And the difference, you know, you train just virtually in isolation for years. And you compete. I know in 1975, I broke the world record and did, you know, I had a real good year, was ranked number one in the world. And still nobody really knew about you. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a real exciting event to watch, you know, because it is... We are so pushed into specialists nowadays. Everybody specializes, mm -hmm. no matter what, in the business world and anything, that somebody who's moderately good at a lot of different things really doesn't get the, the press until the Olympic Games, and that's because the title world's yeah. greatest athlete goes along with it. And wow, if you win, all of a sudden you run into instant success. But maybe what has not been really documented is what, the, what you go through, what you give up, the sacrifice, mm -hmm. preparing to compete internationally in 10 events. For you, Bruce, what was it like? Well, I, you know, I gave up everything. It basically has to be your life. Nowadays, the decathlon has gotten so competitive. You look at Daley Thompson or Jurgen Hinkson's marks. I mean, they are good, proficient in every one of the events. And to do that, you have to spend a lot of time. I mean, I would spend six to eight hours every day for year after year doing it, 365 days out of the year. Um, and you have to do it. It's not that you're a martyr. or it, It's just that the, the nature of the event forces you to do that. You've got to do the work. You've got to you do your homework if you're going to get out there and be competitive. And if you've made up your mind that, yes, that's what I want to do with my life, uh, then you have to go after it. Mm -hmm. Bob, you won it uh, at 17 years old. I remember when you used to come down and you were the Tulare High School track team. One guy, they brought him to Bakersfield, he whipped everyone up. You, you I were listened the to you on the radio. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I listened to you in, in London, 1948. You had to do it twice. You won in 48, the youngest, of course, ever to win a track and field medal. Then you had to pull it all together four years later. Was it tougher the first time or the second time in Helsinki? Uh, Frank, the first time I was 17 and, and really didn't know any better. I just got into it and yeah, the, the second time was different. Uh, defending Olympic champion, I was 21 years old, uh, knew a little bit more about the decathlon guy, then, yeah. old guy. But in those days, uh, all the decathlon athletes were really track and field people who went out for track. Uh, they had one decathlon a year, and that's, that's all they had. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, Bill Toomey started the, uh, or coined the word decathlon in 68, when he started training year-round for the 10 decathlon events. So in our day, it was completely different training. Uh, I recall in 52, I went through the Stanford track season, running the high and low hurdles, throwing the shot and discus. Then about a month before the National Olympic tryout track meet, decathlon meet, I'd pick up the javelin and throw it, and I'd work on the uh, pole vault a little bit, and I run the 1500 meter at least once, just to say I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of us trained that way in those days, but now it's completely yeah, it different. different ah, game, they right? really work. I want to know: Are you finally going to lose <laughs> that one record that you've been holding on to for all these years of being the only guy to ever win it twice? Because Daly's going for it the second time. This could be it, Bob. <laughs> Well, I, I hate to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only record Thank I you have guys. left. That's the, only <laughs> one. We're gonna That's the, the best one. I have we got the decathlon uh, <laughs> beginning very shortly, and we're going to go out there live to see it. Great. Thank you so much for coming in. You guys are both a credit to your gold medals. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thanks. We'll be back with coverage of the decathlon, the beginning.